Scotty Pippen, a lot of viral comments lately. First and foremost, important to note that he's got uh, both a book and a bourbon, I believe, coming out. So on the self-promotion tour and, of course, in today's clickbait era, you know, you got to say some things to, to catch some headlines. So I thought I'd react to some of them, show you, you know, a basketball person's real thoughts on what Scottie Pippen said and if there's any validity to it or if he's lost it. First of all, this is from the GQ interview uh, with him, question about Mark Jackson saying he'd rather have uh, Jordan on him than Pippen because of how physical Pippen was, which Pippen, you know, took that as a sign of respect. Mark Jackson, you know, they don't like to be uh, singled out as a team that Michael Jordan beat. It's all about it's a team game. Scotty clearly still bristling about the, you know, whole notion that uh, the Bulls were Jordan's team. And, you know, I can't blame him terribly for that. I mean, he certainly doesn't get as much credit as he probably should because, yeah, the Bulls without Scotty Pippen, without Dennis Rodman, probably don't do, you know, a whole lot of winning. I mean, that's just a basic fact to, to basketball that Absolutely. You do need a second star, you know, third, at least super role player. And, uh, you know, you need everybody to be a, a star in your role. I mean, you see Steph Curry uh, without his horses this year. You see Kevin Durant without his guys uh, in the playoffs. You see, you know, LeBron without AD at full strength. I mean, it, it does happen time and time again. And people, you know, seem to sometimes put Michael Jordan up on a pedestal, like that he solely individually didn't need anybody and didn't need a team. And, that's not true. I mean, MJ obviously, uh, you know, the most dominant player of all time and, and certainly could lift the team up in, in clutch moments and is probably the most clutch player of all time. But, you know, Damian Lillard's hit a ton of clutch shots too. And he's, you know, just never had that second, third piece, you know, the, those physical guys, those super defenders on a on a team with him, um, you know, to take him to that, that next level. Um, so Scotty absolutely helped take Michael Jordan to that next level, and to be honest, I, I think if he plays in today's era, his, his game's a lot like Giannis, uh, you know, the ability to guard one through five at times, the ability to just impact the game all around with, with hustle, get to the rim a ton, you know, score a little bit in the post, that's a lot of what Pip did, but anyway, you know, again, it's not an individual game, and you can't go into basketball and beat nobody with an individual, and then he brings up Kevin Durant, which obviously, uh, you know, <laughs> struck a nerve, uh, he said this is the first time we've ever really seen Kevin Durant have to be the man and bring the team home. That's true. I mean, we ain't never really had to see that because he's had Westbrook, Steph, Clay. He's been beating people for sure in Golden State by committee with the team. When it was just Tim and Russ, I mean, they, you know, didn't uh, obviously weren't able to win a ring, um, weren't able to get super far in the playoffs a ton. So he did it with a team. He did that. But as Scotty says again, that team did already know how to win without KD. They had already had won plenty uh, before he got there. So you put KD in Brooklyn, Kyrie gets hurt, Harden ain't that guy. I don't know if that means, you know, just uh, in general, he hasn't been that guy in the playoffs or particularly even more so this year because he's been banged up, but either way, probably fair. Uh, and now KD not only has to score for them, but also make plays. And and he <laughs> he says this is no knock to KD, but obviously that uh, – spiral quickly uh but they asked me has he surpassed lebron james and the answer was lebron james knows team basketball better than kd that's not controversial to to me to most coaches probably at all um he, he does end up making a comment later that we'll get to that was a little bit harsher than this but i think the the gist of what scotty was was trying to say was this again this line that lebron understands team basketball better um and i you know, I don't think there's anybody that, that really doubts that. Uh, Le LeBron knows how to make all the winning plays on the glass, you know, passing the ball, drawing double teams, uh, you know, just impacting the game, being in the right spots, screening, rolling, calling plays, calling plays out defensively, all those things that people love to hate on LeBron and, you know, probably because they don't like his politics and things like that, but don't appreciate nearly enough what a – genius he is on the basketball court. Scotty goes on to say KD can score better than LeBron, probably always been able to. True, absolutely true, better score, but has he surpassed LeBron? No, nah, he tried to beat the Bucks instead of util utilizing his team. You see what I'm saying? LeBron would have figured out how to beat them and he wouldn't have been exhausted and he may not have taken the last shot, 
But LeBron ain't KD, and KD ain't LeBron. KD is a shooter, a scorer, but he doesn't have what LeBron has. I don't even think that's terribly a a knock on KD. I mean, it's mostly just about LeBron's size and and physicality and his ability to to physically dominate games and and get unbelievably deep post position and get to the rim and, and finish through contact. And, you know, KD like Scotty gives him credit for, is, is a better shooter, better scorer, pure scorer than LeBron's ever been. But LeBron is able just to use brute force to to find a way to get to the rim, to get fouled, and you know, and when you take that away from him, he makes the right play. He he finds teammates on, on kickouts. KD is more just a one on one, get you a bucket, rise up at the elbow, you know, turn around in the post, elevate straight over you, hezzy pull ups from three. I mean, he's got a million different solutions, but yeah, he's he's not the pure, uh, you know, just do everything guy like like LeBron is, and that that part's unquestionably true. And uh, you know, Scotty goes on. That's good when you got Steph leading the troops. Blah blah blah. You got to know how to lead and win. KD, as great as his offense was, turned out to be his worst enemy because he didn't know this. So this was the part that KD took offense to, and the line that got blasted all over the place, and. You know, this line, I, I don't know, again, if this interview was uh, in person or typed, seems like probably in person recorded. So, you know, you're speaking off the cuff like I am here, and, and sometimes you probably say things that aren't exactly the way you meant them. That's how I'd interpret this, honestly. KD, as great as his offense was, turned out to be his worst enemy because he didn't know how to play team basketball when it came down to it. I don't think he's saying Kevin Durant doesn't know how to play team basketball. I mean, he even just said something above, like we said, about uh, that LeBron just better at, at the team basketball part. I don't think he meant it as an absolute KD doesn't know how to play team basketball. I think he meant it as, you know, again, when it came down to it in this series, he was. He was trying to take all the shots. He was trying to go punch for punch and go one against three against the honest and Chris and Drew. Um and yeah, and in fairness to him, he probably had to because this year's Brooklyn team, I mean, Harden obviously was a shell of himself. Joe Harris lost all his confidence uh, really down the stretch. Um, you know, Bruce Brown obviously is is not taking threes for the most part. I mean, they had a lot of guys who were afraid to shoot the ball. I mean, you know, maybe I guess you could say that, that LeBron would have just and this is what Scotty seems to be saying, LeBron would have found a way to just overall impact the game enough, you know, get his teammates involved early, conserve his energy at times, you know, know he couldn't play full 48 minutes, do what he needed to do to just find a win. And that, you know, has been LeBron for the most part over his career. But could he have taken this team with with a Harden on one foot, Joe Harris not knocking down shots, so on and so forth, and, you know, still found a way to win without taking the big shots down the stretch? questionable so yeah so Scotty says you got three guys scoring for the team and you're the only guy scoring for your team who's gonna win we in overtime and you played every minute you're gonna lose but LeBron would have been better in that kind of situation because he would have used his team to pick them apart I mean again it's I agree that LeBron would have drawn more doubles he would have you know found more wide open shots for guys like Harris but it is a make miss league if, if they're not knocking him down not much you can do so he says, what else does Kevin Durant need to learn at this point? Scotty goes on, he needs to learn how to utilize his teams, has to learn how to set his teammates up to be better. That's it. As great as he is, there's a cap to his talent. He could have, you know, made that three, killed them in regulation, and we wouldn't have been saying any of this. True. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Uh, make miss league, like I said. But Scotty says, I knew going into overtime he wasn't gonna make and he was take he wasn't gonna make it, like as in he wasn't gonna make it through overtime. He was taking all the shots, you done played the whole game, bro, and they've got guys physically wearing you down, you're gonna lose. I mean that's fair. That that's a fair perspective from a you know, long time great. Giannis was under the same stress, but not quite. Giannis did get rest. He didn't have to score every time. KD, he got no rest and pretty much had to put a bucket on the board every time they went down. And he did that, but that's a lot. If he had a chance to do it all over again, he'd probably do it the same way. But he ain't have no more. He shot that last shot and it was shorter than Giannis's free throws. Uh, interviewer asked, you know, he was tired after that. But have you seen LeBron take a shot like that? He ain't going to take that shot. He's going to be smarter. He's going to force a double team. That's what KD wasn't able to do. He was so exhausted he couldn't even go to the bucket. I'm going to be honest. I felt like Steve Nash should have put KD on the block and just let him sit there and throw passes so he could rest a little bit. But he kept him at the top of the floor where they were getting all up underneath him, being physical with him. You can be a lot more physical uh, up there than, you know, a seven-footer 
with his back to you in the post where you can only get an arm bar on him. Uh, it wasn't fair, but that's just coaching. Steve Nash is an inexperienced coach. So you got to know, he wore KD down. How are how are the fuck are you going to win? He played the whole fucking game. How you wake up the next day and say you should have won. I mean, yeah, that's not crazy. That's, uh, you know, th- there's some logic and validity to that for sure. Like we said, LeBron... You know, he's not always the guy that wants to take the last shot, but he's got the ball in his hands and he's going to make the right play. He's he's going to, you know, work you down, draw a double team, make the floor tilt towards him and, and find open shots. And, and, yeah, there is a big difference, like Scotty says, between, you know, being in the post, being, you know, able to draw a double team down there versus just having the f- ball straight up top, straight in an ISO. And, and you know, the criticisms of Nash – might be fair, and uh, you know, for a first-time head coach, those those are real things. And one of the issues with appointing a, a first-time head coach, and um, you know, we go on. Obviously, he, uh, well, I skipped a little bit ahead, but yeah, he talks about the Tony Kukoc thing, which he then also hit on today with Dan Patrick, and that's going to go very viral, obviously, because you know he was talking about it. Uh, being a racial move and calling Phil Jackson a racist. I don't know. I mean, we haven't been in that locker room, so I guess <laughs> Scottie Pippen uh, is entitled to his opinion and would know better than us uh, being on the inside, but certainly, uh, again, seems to be going the, the clickbait route a little bit and, and trying to stir up discussion, which you need to sell a book and to sell uh, a liquor. So um, who knows how authentic those thoughts are, but... But yeah, I mean, Pip's always been bitter about Kukoc getting that play drawn up for him, and that's, uh, you know, what KD then <laughs> responded to him with. Didn't the great Scottie Pippen refuse to go in the game for the last second shot because he was feel- in his feelings his coach drew up the play for a better shooter? Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> that is uh, what happened, and, and Scottie can continue to talk about himself in the third person and say that that was Scottie's team and that was Pip's team, and Pip- Scottie should have had the the ball and Scotty should have had the shot and whatever, but you know what? Tony Kukoc was a better shooter and Phil Jackson drew up a play that worked and got Scotty Pippen a shot and he made the shot and Scotty Pippen refused to go in the game. And that was low and it's a shame that Scotty's never just taken accountability uh for that and, and said that he was tripping and, you know, shouldn't have done that. Um but anyway, so yeah, he's uh he's still bitter obviously about Phil and <laughs> he even said, do you understand English? Which, ironically, he also said to Dan Patrick. So I don't know if that's like his trademarked, uh, you know, line that he's going with. It seems condescending as hell and, and seemed to be particularly uh, unnecessarily abrasive and rude to Dan Patrick. But I don't know. Maybe, again, this is uh, he's trying to trademark the do you understand English thing again. Um, don't know where it comes from, but. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty pretty bitter. Obviously, Kukoc isn't the leader of the team, trying to make him a hero, whatever. He's probably trying to just win the game and, you know, have the highest percentage shooter take that particular shot uh, because it was about winning and it's not about you. And Scotty didn't really understand that and thought it was all about him. Last but not least, uh, Ben Simmons he also touched on and, you know, people uh, framed it as, uh, that Scotty has some thoughts about Ben Simmons and, you know, just being shocked by what he said, but he didn't really say anything ra- ridiculous about Ben Simmons. Uh, the interviewer says his poor free throw shooting is inexcusable, blah, blah, blah. So Scotty says, you guys have been looking at Simmons for five years. You know he can't shoot. You know he don't look to shoot in the fourth quarter. You know he's afraid to go to the foul line. He don't want to be humiliated, so... I'm not against Ben Simmons, but I think he is who he is, for sure, 100%. I watched a lot of games that Doc shouldn't have had him in in the fourth quarter. Some card analogy, blah, blah, blah. This kid been this way the whole time, and Doc brought him in and set him up for failure. He'd been like this, and you guys know he'd been like this, and Doc kept putting him in the game. He kept letting that team do fouls on him. Take him out the game. The Lakers did it with Shaq, and he's bigger, more dominant, and probably more fearless, absolutely more fearless than Ben. Doc made him a failure, so... It's thoughts not really about Ben Simmons, to be honest, as much. I mean, in terms of the shocking part, if anything, that's a shot at Doc Rivers that, that seems to be a bit too far. I mean, is he proposing Doc Rivers doesn't play the defensive player of the year and, you know, his point guard and 
second best player for the entire fourth quarter just as a preventative measure. I mean, I know you certainly, and Doc did, take him out offensively at times and leave him out down the stretch and in the fourth quarter and so on and so forth. But, you know, you can't sit him the entire time. Talk about becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, if, you know, you miss a few free throws and then Doc just after, like, missing, you know, two at the beginning of the series, he's going to not play him every fourth quarter. I mean, what do you think that's going to do to his psyche and his mental after shooting 60% from the free throw line all season? It's it's a it became a total self-fulfilling prophecy. So I don't think you can say Doc made him a failure. I think Ben like Scotty says, was was scared in the moment and got the yips and got in his head, and, and that's what happened. And Doc tried to mitigate it at times, tried to not let him get intentionally fouled, tried to take him out the game, and, and Ben couldn't make him. Um, so he needs to fix that in the offseason, bottom line. Scotty continues, he's still a good basketball player. That's his weakness, shooting the basketball. If you take that away from Ben Simmons, he got no weakness. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big weakness, though, and it's, you know, more than just, like, free throws. It's also anything outside of two feet. But anyway, that's Giannis's weakness, too. But Giannis don't mind being humiliated. That's the difference between him and Ben Simmons. Giannis will go to the free throw line and shoot two fucking air balls and come right down the court the next time and try to dunk on you. If Ben Simmons misses a free throw, he's going to start passing it before you get to the free throw line on the other end. He didn't even cross half court with the basketball because he was so afraid of being humiliated going to that foul line. That's why he didn't try to make that dunk at the end of the game. He's been doing it all year, bro. I mean, were people surprised by that? Because that's unquestionably true. I mean, that's, you know, th- there's zero question. He passed that ball to Thibel because he was afraid of getting fouled. He had the yips. And the free throw thing was all mental. So I-, I don't know if that part drew controversy or people are surprised by that part. But, yeah, he's right. And to be honest, it's a... That's an astute observation, too. I mean, I know, you know, we think it's, uh, I guess, more commonsensical, but, uh, you know, y- you do see that in Giannis, and it is pretty amazing for a guy to come out and, you know, he'll airball a free throw and then swish the next one. You know, he'll airball a free throw and then come down and take a three. Um, he's not afraid. He's not afraid of failure, and, and that's what seems to be the biggest uh, deterrent to Ben Simmons's greatness and success is that he's uh, – you know, he'll miss something, he'll miss a couple free throws, and, and then he'll want to stop shooting them. He'll, he gets in his head. Giannis has that ultimate confidence, irrational confidence at times, but it, it served him well, and obviously you need to have that in the NBA. You need to not be afraid to, to keep trying to keep shooting. Otherwise, um, you know, you get in your head and, and you stop doing it, and that's that makes you unplayable. Um, so, yeah, I, overall I think <laughs> certainly a, a little bit of controversy, a little bit... Uh, out there going again for the for the noise and the clickbait and so on and so forth. But but there's some validity to to almost everything that Scotty said and and you know he's obviously a high basketball IQ guy and and he understands the game and a little bit maybe a little bit of crazy little maybe a little liquor impacting him. I know he's had some uh, certain personal hardships in the past year, tragedies and things of that sort. Um, you know, that maybe have made it tough as well. But uh, the basketball stuff, not not totally off base. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks uh, for listening. Make sure you thumb up, subscribe, um, and uh, check out the Scout with Brian podcast if you like more of these kind of long-form, uh, pure basketball talk and takes. Scout with Brian, Instagram, YouTube, the podcast, and patreon.com slash Brian. Thanks again.